Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. A clothing store set on fire and the sus suspected culprit caught on camera. Surveillance video showing somebody breaking in and setting a sweatshirt on fire. Soon the whole place is up in flames. That taps our news here at 11. I'm Karen Drew in for Kimberly Gill. And I'm Damon Fernandez in for Devin Skilling. You know, this happened at the wealthy store in Oak Park. We profiled that store back in 2018 as its owner worked to give back to the community. Our Jacqueline Francis spoke with him tonight. So Jacqueline, he gave you those videos because he wants something to be done on this. He did look at this. There's really nothing left of this storefront. It's all boarded up. As you can see, there's still that smoky stench in the air. And as for the video, well, see for yourself. The camera clocks someone breaking in just after two in the morning Thursday. You see a hooded person with a mask over their face looking near the register. Went to the register, went to the back. And then it's like he didn't find anything of value and he just was like, Flame device. They set the fire and then disappear out the back. I was in shock, disbelief, hurt. Then, like, the course of the day, I just got angry. The owner of the wealthy store in Oak Park waking up to this. What am I going to do? This, like, my primary source of income. Rashad Jose built the retail business from the ground up. Started with nothing. We started online, built up the demand to the point where we scaled our business to the point where we knew we could open up a storefront successfully. Only to have someone burn it down. Like, why would you do that? So it's somewhere that so many people care about, you know what I'm saying? It's always the one person that messes it up for everybody. Oak Park officials say no one was hurt and they are investigating. The owner hoping this video can lead police to the person responsible. As the store works to rebuild, you can still support them by going online and shopping their website. That's thewealthybrand.com. Reporting live in Oak Park, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Yeah, you just hate hearing about things like this happening. Thank you, Jacqueline. Well, an electrical utility worker died on the job today. It happened on Powell between 32 and 33 mile roads in northern Macomb County. Crews were there to put out an electrical fire. DTE tells us a worker came in contact with an overhead equipment and we're told the victim is 61 years old, that he worked for a contractor of DTE Energy. The Macomb County Sheriff's Office is taking over the investigation into this in incident. Well, a controversial construction project is drawing a large crowd tonight. Now, we've been telling you how plans to rebuild a portion of Michigan Avenue in Corktown, between Corktown and Campus Marshes in Detroit, is raising some concerns. Well, especially since some say the design calls for removing historical brick pavers along that street. Well, MDOT and the city held a public meeting about the project, and many people sure did show up. A packed room on Thursday night, standing room only, as community members gathered to discuss proposed improvements along a portion of US-12 or Michigan Avenue in Detroit. We're here to hear from you because we really need to hear your input. MDOT and the city of Detroit hosting this meeting amid growing community concerns as the agencies prepare to rebuild a two-mile stretch of Michigan Avenue between I-96 and Campus Marshes. Grace Garros is a downtown business owner. She's among those who showed up with questions. I want to hear that my business number one will not be dis disrupted again because time and time again they fix sidewalks three times within a year they fix traffic lights three four they can't get it right so who's to tell me that this isn't going to interrupt businesses small businesses are running into enough problems as it is downtown in its presentation MDOT said construction along this stretch is needed due to the age and condition of the road proposed design updates would include greater pedestrian and bicycle lanes streetscape enhancements historical characteristics and innovation Clarissa Grimes is a Corktown resident and a biker. Something I am uh, very passionate about is protected bike lanes throughout the city. So any chance we get to have some protected bike lanes that are not only designated by um, visual, but also um, by physical barriers is going to be really important to me. Among design concept challenges drawing some in this crowd are construction plans calling for busting up historic brick pavers along Michigan in the Corktown area. In its presentation, MDOT showed the selected design concept calls for repurposing salvaged brick pavers. MDOT project manager Mohamed al Gorabi recognizes community members want more input and says this process is not over. We know there are some concerns, like the bricks. We want to be able to have a dialogue and discussion with the community about how to basically come up with a solution that everybody can live with. 
And MDOT says no final decisions have yet been made about this construction project. The project manager says they'll take the input, regroup, and return to the community with updates. UAW President Sean Fain joins rallying workers today in Macomb County as tensions rise between the union and Stellantis. The rank and file are trying to stop the automaker from cutting out that second shift at its Warren stamping plant. That's about 2,500 jobs. In an open letter this week, Stellantis's U.S. dealer network criticized the CEO for sales declines and factory production cuts. Union officials want Stellantis to keep its promises made during last year's strike. We want them to hold their commitments not only to Warren Truck, but also to Belvedere and all the different uh, plants that they said they were going to make promises to us. We're going to keep it going. We want to make sure that the company's getting the message that we're not just going to sit on our laurels and be ready to go. Local 4 did reach out to Stellantis, but did not receive a response. The company did respond to the open letter that the Stellantis U.S. dealer network wrote. You can read that on our website at clickondetroit.com. City officials are breaking ground on what Henry Ford Health calls the single largest health care investment in Detroit's history. The new state-of-the-art hospital facility will cover 1.2 million square feet. The emergency department will more than double in size to 75,000 square feet. That facility will be home to 28 operating rooms that can handle nearly every type of complex surgical case from transplants to brain surgery. We have been working with the community and this is going to be their home, their hospital, and we're building park space and we're integrating music and art throughout the community. I think they're going to be finding this to be an amazing welcoming addition to the neighborhood and that's our commitment. We want to grow and prosper in the entire area. And that expansion includes a partnership with the Shirley Ryan Ability Lab to provide intensive inpatient physical medicine and rehabilitation. It's supported by a nearly $130 million investment by the Gilbert Family Foundation. Democratic vice presidential nominee Governor Tim Waltz rallied supporters here in Battleground, Michigan tonight. This was Governor Waltz's first solo trip to the Great Lakes state since joining Vice President Harris as her running mate. Waltz firing up the crowd at a museum in Grand Rapids. He will hold campaign events tomorrow in Grand Rapids before an afternoon stop in Lansing. He will then move on to Wisconsin. And on the Republican side, former President Trump says no to another debate with Vice President Kamala Harris. Mr. Trump made the comments today on Truth Social. Meantime, the former president plans to make a campaign stop next week in Flint. He's going to hold a town hall Tuesday night at 7 p.m. It'll be held at the Dort Financial Center. Now, tickets to the event are available at the campaign's website. All right, oh, so it's been a nice, nice day. Night, right? Yeah, yeah. You nice know, day, nice, nice night. Yeah, and, um, I know it's only going to get better. Because the weekend's approaching. That's right. You know, you and I are on that weekend vibe today. I think we've been talking about it. I'm all down for it's it. I'm ready. Yeah. Hey, what's Ron, what's happening tonight? Devon, Karen, beautiful conditions out there. We saw that skyline view behind you. Got to show it again. It is stunning. We have mostly clear skies, very comfortable temperatures. That view, of course, coming from Windsor. Now, tonight, as you're stepping out the door, we are still in the 70s if you're in most of Wayne County, including in Detroit. But as you get away from the city, those temperatures do cool off just slightly, especially as you go farther toward the north. So again, we're in the 70s as you get into Wayne County and nearby communities. As you go into Macomb County, 71 and Mount Clemens. We're at 70 in Pontiac, same for Grosse Hill, farther down toward the south, 66 in Monroe. Look at that, though. We're at 59 right now as you get into Port Huron, 62 in Sandusky, 65 in Ann Arbor. So one of the things that we've been watching for, temperatures cooling over the next few hours with clear skies. But we will eventually in the overnight hours and early tomorrow morning see some patchy fog developing and that's going to impact some people for the morning drive. Those temperatures starting out in the morning in the 60s before we make a very warm return to the lower 80s tomorrow. I'm going to talk about what we can expect for tomorrow evening as a lot of people are looking forward to football games and then there's a lot of sports, more football as we go into the weekend. So that full weekend forecast is just minutes away. All right, thanks so much. Well, the countdown is on until America's Thanksgiving Parade presented by Gardner White. Yeah, tonight we can reveal the trio that will serve as Grand Marshals for the 98th edition of the annual parade put on by the parade company. Daniel J. Lupp is a native Detroiter and is the current president and CEO of Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan. He's set to retire at the end of the year.
Joining him along the route down Woodward will be U.S. Senator Debbie Stabenow. She will retire at the end of her term after more than two decades. And finally, NBC Sports' own Mike Tirico will join the fun this Thanksgiving. He's the voice of Sunday Night Football. He lives in Ann Arbor. And he really is everywhere, Olympics, et cetera. Remember, Local 4 is your home for America's Thanksgiving Parade, presented by Gardner White.